Hi everybody, hope you're okay. Um, now, I've got a problem with the caravan. I've noticed that I've got some damage at the front on the hitch. Um, now, I don't know if it's always been there. I don't know if it's something that's just happened, but by looking at the the uh, the marks and the, the debris, it looks as if it might have been damaged for some time. I am, of course, referring to the gator, and our gator has split. And that's bad news, because that's letting all the grease out from the hitch uh, head and the damper area but also letting road dirt and muck and water and all sorts of nastiness in as well. And that's not a great mix uh, with the, uh, the the grease which is in there, water, dirt and everything. It's just going to bung everything up and make everything a bit gnarly. A bit gnarly. So um, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to show you the damage, and I'm going to show you how we replace it. I've had a look online. I can't find any videos or any tutorials of anywhere on how to replace the gator on an Alco uh, 3004, I think this hitch is, um, and it's 2004 uh, predecessor. So I've gone through, I've asked a load of people some questions, got all the right answers, I think, I've uh, got all the tools I need to do the job, and obviously I can then show you how to replace your gator if you've got a split gator yourself. Shouldn't be too difficult, but I know that there's a few gotchas which we need to make uh, special uh, attention to. I know I could get this done up at the uh, my local dealership. I know that they would replace it under warranty for me, but where's the fun in that? And also, how does it educate any of you guys if you've got a similar issue and give you the encouragement to get it done yourself? So let's go outside. Let me show you the uh, issue and then let's make a start and replace it. Right, I hope you can hear me over the... Uh the noise and the wind in the background but I think you can see here the problem that we've got you can see that that is quite badly split and that is what is causing the issue you can see it's wet on the outside which means grease is coming out but also if you notice this fine dust as well that's all going to be going inside so that's not great so we need to replace this and in order to replace it the hitch has to come off Yes indeed, the hitch does need to be removed and in theory it's a simple task of removing the two bolts and pulling the hitch head off. But there is a procedure to follow and before we get into that let's just have a quick review of the tools and the parts that are going to be used. First off we need the new gator obviously. There are lots available but I've put a link to the correct one for the Alco AKS 3004 hitch. In fact I've put a link to the fitting kit as it contains a few parts that we could use later on. One of those parts is a dowel. Now this one measures up as 12mm diameter by 48mm in length and if you can't find the dowel online a top tip is to cut an M12 bolt down to 48mm and that will do the same job. However if you are using the Alco dowel there's an important modification that we need to make later on to make this work better. Onto the tools we need a T55 Torx bit, an appropriate ratchet, a Phillips screwdriver, hammer, protective gloves as this gets really greasy and very dirty and we're also going to need a grease gun, a torque wrench, some degreasing spray and finally access to some hot water. Oh and if you have one now would be a good time to crack open the swear jar too. To start with make sure the handbrake is on as we may need to push against the hitch to help get the bolts out. Then using the T55 Torx bit and the ratchet remove the front M12 bolt. Remember that this bolt has a washer for later on. Now we focus on the rear bolt, but here's a word of caution. This bolt not only holds the hitch in place, but also the damper inside the damper tube. If we remove this bolt, the damper will pull forward and make this job a lot harder to complete. So remove the nut from the opposite side so only the bolt is in situ. We will use the dowel to hold the damper in place whilst we remove the bolt. But before we do that, here's a top tip that I found very useful. Chamfer the edge of one side so it has a slight taper. This can be done with a file and it doesn't need to be excessive. Also smear a little bit of grease on it too. Line up the dowel with the bolt and gently tap the dowel onto the bolt pushing it and the dowel into the hitch head. Once it's gone in as far as it can you may need to reuse the bolt to tap the last few millimetres. You don't need to hit this hard just gentle taps here is all you need. Now I found that I pushed it in just a little bit too far, so I had to tap it back a couple of times before the hitch head pulled forward and away. The front bolt hole also has a sleeve that fits inside the damper tube. Now I removed this so it didn't fall out or dislodge over the next few steps. I installed this sleeve back onto the bolt and it makes sure that I will not forget it when it comes to refitting later on. Now as you can see, this is in a bit of a sorry state. Considering it's not that old, it's, it's in a pretty rough state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean all this up. Um, when we get this off, I'm gonna clean it all up, make it nice and clean, get all this off.
So to release the A-frame, I've got to undo a screw here, screw the other side, and then lift the A-frame. And it's glued on in some places as well. So we're gonna have to go careful and make sure we get up in one careful move, movement, movement, I should say. Um, I only want to lift the front, I don't want to take it all off. Um, if I want to take it all off, I've got to disconnect the ATC light as well. But for the moment, we're just going to lift the A-frame at the front. Now, as I mentioned, mine was held in with just two screws each side and thankfully no glue. But I am aware that some covers are screwed and glued in place. Different manufacturers and different styles of A-frame covers are attached in very different ways. So once the screws are removed, usually one each side, try to gently lift the A-frame cover and you won't need to remove it much, just enough to give you enough space for the next step. Now we can pull the existing gator off the caravan. And this is gonna be tight and a bit greasy. So it's gonna be a tricky job to get it off. So I just pulled it forward and sort of wrenched it forward. And now we can remove the gator. Like so. And as you can see, everything, everything is covered in grease. At this point, it's a good idea to remove any debris, dirt or old grease. The grease that was here was full of muck. And I don't want this in place when we replace the gator. So with some degreaser and a paper towel, I removed the debris and gave the entire shaft a good clean. Don't worry, I will re-grease the entire section later on, but I also removed the leftover grease from the front grease nipple too, which was also a bit gross. It's now time to refit the new gator, and this is where hot water is helpful. I did try to fit the gator without heating it up, but it was way too tight. So I placed the gator in a pan of water and heated it up on the cooker. It didn't boil, but it did get quite hot. And this was enough to loosen the rubber and make it more pliable when installing it. I wiped the insides to remove any water prior to fitting and it fitted on really easy. So yes, after using the hot water on the hitch, it's now on there. As you can see, it's now firmly over that lip. Before the gator cools down, rotate it so the drain holes are aligned to the bottom and you can see the join here at the top of the gator and that shows you that you've got it lined up correctly. Now it's just a case of refitting everything in reverse. So I started refitting the A-frame with two securing screws and then it's back to reinstalling the hitch. Refit the sleeve inside the coupling if this has popped out and then slide the hitch head back on. Insert the first bolt carefully, and remember this one has the washer. Once in place, add the nut and tighten to hold it in place. So the second bolt hole should be lined up over the dowel. So using the bolt, gently tap the dowel out so it drops out on the floor and the bolt is now held in place. Again, add the nut and tighten. So just the last few steps to do now, with a torque wrench, tighten both of these nuts up to 86 newton meters and manipulate the gator so it fits in place perfectly. The last step is to add some grease back into the system. This is achieved by pumping grease into the front of two grease nipples. If you have a slightly older hitch, you may find these grease nipples on the underside of the A-frame. I added about 20 pumps of this mini grease gun, which seemed to work really well. By the way, if you're interested, the grease I'm using is an all-purpose lithium grease. Finally, push back and forth the hitch a couple of times to ensure the gator is aligned correctly and that everything is working fine. Right, and there we go. A very simple job with lots of pitfalls and lots of things to uh, know before you attempt to do this job. Namely, this thing needs to be rounded off at the edges a little bit so it glides in a little bit easier. And secondly, we have access to hot water. Uh, that made it so much easier to get on that white uh, plastic lip. Uh, whilst it was hot, it just literally slipped on straight away. I've put a link to all the tools which you'll need for this job down below. There isn't really many specialist tools. Uh, many of you will already be carrying a torque wrench so you know that you can torque it up to the correct specs at the end. Uh, you'll also be carrying things like hammers, no doubt. Um, I used a, an actual hammer, I didn't use a mallet, um, but that was absolutely fine. So there we go, that's all from me today. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon if you can do all of that. I'll catch you in the next upload.